right. Well, hello, Fuck Cancer family. This is Brian McEnany with another, uh, what I'm now calling a podcast, for lack of a better word, but this is our Teammate Tuesday podcast. This is the third in the series, and um, today I'm super stoked. I uh, have We have one of our teammates. I have not met this up until before today. Um, so Jonathan Pasquale is one of our teammates. Um, he is a um, fighter and survivor. Uh, and he also has a really cool thing going on uh, that we're going to get into and talk about. So um, we're here for him. So I'd rather have him do all the talking. I'm just going to sit back. So Jonathan, welcome. Happy to meet you. Um, thanks for giving us the time today. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for all the work that you do. And uh, I'm happy to be here and uh, meet uh, the team. All right. Well, let's get into it. So um, tell me, how long, I mean, kind of how long you've been with the team um, and, and kind of what brought you to the team and just kind of give us a little, little bit of background and who you are and what you do and, and why you do it. Yeah, in October 2022, I believe, I was in Kona uh, for the Ironman World Championships. Uh, slated to do it, but I wasn't able to for reasons oh. that we'll talk about. And then I saw the uh, fuck cancer um, um, tent of Jason. So I got interested and uh, I went in there and I met him. And I decided then that um, uh, I think I want to join this team. And uh, I also know one of our athletes, uh, Dr. Kristen Giles, and okay. uh, her husband, uh, Paul Rosica, right. who are, um, uh, we met here in Napa. And I said, okay, uh, maybe through Kristen, I'll get to know more about the foundation and uh, start from there. Right. Uh, so I think I officially joined that year, but started racing um, for the team 2023 and continuing to this year. Right. So I got to ask, so was it the 10th that drew your attention or was it Jason's bike? Did he have the bike in Kona at the time? His, his, yeah, his I, 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 bike. <laughs> I, I saw the uh, the the name. Okay, <laughs> right? so, okay. Well, I I feel that sentiment, you know. Right, uh, exactly. exactly. Fighting this, so and then I saw the bike. Said, "Oh, fantastic looking bike!" Oh, right. and I, at, at one point in time, it's like, "How do you get it to look like this?" And I started looking it up. Like, "Oh, that would be so cool. Maybe I'll do it on my bike." <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean that, that bike has gotten a lot of, uh, of publicity out of it, and 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 rightfully so. I mean, you can see it from a mile away uh, if you're ever on the race course with it. So, um, so um, you, you mentioned that that you kind of have a, a, a story that kind of why you couldn't do that. I mean, by the way, congratulations for, for, you know, getting there. I mean, that, that in and of itself is an accomplishment. Um, but, but you had indicated that, that um, you had a fight or that you were fighting. Yeah. Um, I was training for my ultra marathons and the Kona world championships in 2022 However, I started feeling uh, like three months before March, before diagnosis, this facial fullness. I get short of breath after a mile or so, even though I was getting fitter, leaner, stronger, things were off. Uh, I would wake up at night gasping for air and I would look in the mirror and I would see this face that's swollen. I look fat and even my neck. And then it came to a point where every time that I stood up, I get dizzy. And then there were times where I just, from a sitting position, stand up and things would just get blurry, black out in my vision. And I would just have the sensation of falling and just pass out. Wow. So I knew that there was something wrong. Um, and this was March 23 that I called my colleagues in UCSF Medical Center, University of California, San Francisco. And I told them, I think something's wrong. I think I need an echocardiogram. And I went to the emergency room as they advised. And that's when I looked at my phone. Uh, since I have access, I work at uh, UCSF Medical Center as a lung transplant nurse practitioner. I look at my phone and I said, there's something wrong with my x-ray in the mediastinum where the heart and the great vessels 
are. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, that means we're going to get a CT scan. And then we got the CT scan and I was scrolling through my phone and I knew I had cancer then. Um, the thing was, I remember just being so calm at that time. Um, I said that, okay, we need more information. And from there on, we'll have to figure out what to do. And this is going to be within a matter of days to weeks and even months. It's just that I think my background of having a brain tumor in 2007, uh, having that brain tumor removed and dealing with my mortality at that point in time, having a four-year-old son, a young wife, that I started looking at... Um, my mortality, death every day from 2007 onwards that I knew that anything can be taken away from right. me. And uh, it, it's much more like a stoic practice. And therefore, when I saw my eyes, my x-ray and my CT scan, in a way, I was ready, prepared for it. Mm. And uh, there was no anger or why me, just like in 2007 and bargaining, nothing like that. Right, right. So, so that's how it started. Okay. It, it, it's interesting. And I'm, and I'm always kind of just interested in, in, in hearing the stories because, because sometimes when I, when I talk to you and, you know, one of the, the big um, um, drivers of, of the fuck cancer um, group organization is, is that early detection, right. And, and the testing and, 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 you know, getting tested and getting the scans and doing all that stuff because that's the best chance of survival. Um, but but it's it's interesting to me um, that a lot of people who who I talk to sometimes they almost like feel it they like know it right and and they can see a physical change or they can see something physically going on um, and so when they hear the news yeah it's devastating news but like somewhere in the back of their mind they're kind of like in, like you said in a way of kind of dealt with it a little bit right because they knew kind of the worst case was coming they kind of put it off um and so it's interesting to hear that that not only did you have the medical background to to you know read the x-ray and go mm, this doesn't look right but then to also have the the brain tumor and 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 deal with that kind of that the the mortality of it all yes uh this is true and um that's why i always advocate for people who are you know young healthy old even or even athletes like you and me to not forgo any symptoms that they're feeling like yeah. losing weight they can't eat they're short of breath um there's a wound that's not healing or something on their skin that's like oh what is that or headaches things like those because uh, unfortunately um like you said by the time that it's discovered it is already too late. It's yeah. in its advanced stages. And if you look at me, for example, I could have had blood tests like for years. Right. Into right. it, even during diagnosis, my blood work was fine. Right. And somebody would look at me and said, Oh, you what? You're running marathons as a training? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're, you're fine. Right. And, uh, the thing is, uh, it's really important to not forgo any of these symptoms and have your yearly checkups because it will make a difference as far as uh, um, what would be the plan afterwards. Sure, sure, yeah. and I think and I think it's an important message too, especially for endurance athletes like us. Whether you bike, run, swim, kayak, whatever you do, or or just you know go for normal walks, just live a general healthy lifestyle, it's easy as for us to sit there and say. Oh, I have a headache because I'm dehydrated. Or, oh, my, my back hurts because I was in my bike for six hours, right? Or, you know, um, this, this area hurts because of that. I mean, we, we can rationalize it all that we want. Um, and then, and then it's not until we go, oh, wait a second, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, we, amen to your point. Guy, everyone out there, do not. We know the difference between soreness, yes, and, and pain, yes, and we have to recognize that. And I think that's that's the big call out here is that know that difference between soreness and pain and do something about it. So, 
And this is why my uh, oncologists actually give me free reign as far as uh, my training and my racing. They know that I'm an experienced athlete. Mm-hmm. I know when to push it and when to recognize the difference between uh, your normal aches and pains from training from what I did not know before leading to the diagnosis. You know, right. I was gradually getting shorter breath. Um, I was... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I had like my neck veins popping out and things like those. And then I said, oh, I'm just not training enough. You know, I look at <laughs> my data from training peaks and Strava and, you know, we did all of these and we continue to do this. Some of us, right. and right. then it's more like we rationalize and say, you know, you're not working hard enough and that's our fault. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Or, or we yell at the, we're sitting there yelling at the Garmin watch, saying, "You're not doing. Let me check the batteries. Let me check this." Let me, yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a very easy trap to get into. So, so um, just a quick update. Prognosis now, health wise now. Are we? Where are we? Are we? Are, if my, I don't mind me asking. Yeah, my cancer is called mediastinal paraganglioma. Uh, a paraganglion is uh, part of your autonomic nervous system, so the nerves. Mm-hmm. And mine started right by my heart, a uh, mm-hmm. paraganglion there. Um, it is stage four. The cancer has spread through the lymph nodes in my lungs and throughout my skeleton, skull, neck, back, and lumbar spine throughout my ribs, sternum, um, pelvis, sacrum, actually my arms and my thigh bones. Um, I've actually had uh, pathological fractures and pain. Pain is something that I deal with on top of all these other symptoms because of uh, those uh, bone metastases. As far as prognosis, the way that you can look at this is uh, I'm right there smack in the middle, like five years. Um, you can have a pancreatic cancer diagnosis and you can be told you've got a few months, six months to live or 10 years if you've got prostate cancer, for example. So this is something more, at least in my mind, okay, five years. Um I think uh, that's okay. Uh, I think I'm the type of person who thinks through things and tries to perceive the situation the best way possible. And to me, it's uh, how do I best live uh, those five years? And I think I'm on the right track. I have been called a warrior ever since uh, this diagnosis and uh, that we're going to fight and beat this cancer. And, And I know there's a lot of people who are going through this process and um i realized as a someone in medicine like cancer is an ancient disease five years is five years that was my thought process back then Mm -hmm. and it is what it is right but then through my wife who's the most loving and kind and courageous person that i know she changed that medical thinking into you know Winning the battle is something that you can do. And I think that is what I do daily. I win my battles daily from when I was getting treatments, just simply getting out of bed, like walking around and going through that back surgery and said, oh, maybe I can hike. And then eventually run and and, with, and go throughout those treatments and 2022, uh, 23, I kept building myself up. Like, I'm going to sign up. I did marathons, ultra marathons, triathlons. And I said, this is how I win by simply doing the things that I love to do, uh, being with my wife and my son, uh, continuing my work in lung transplant. And the bottom line is, Brian, I I think I can be a force for good in these remaining years, whatever that may be. And I think 
I can still give. That's what I want to do. Wow. I mean, that's that I, I, I was just jotting. No, I mean, I love I love this is how I win that that I think for anyone who's going to be watching this, that's going to speak volumes, you know, so wherever you are and in so many different ways of life. Right. I mean, I mean, whether you're fighting or you're a warrior or you're going through some other things in your life, you know, just just getting up in the morning um, is the win and identifying this is how I win. I, 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 I really just jotted that down. I absolutely love love that so much. Um, the um, so from a, I mean, you're doing so much, right? Um, um, and and you're training, and that's that's just crazy to think about. Um, how has this team kind of helped you, kind of in 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 your fight, in your battles, and how does I mean, how has it helped you win? I think a lot of it is hearing, seeing other people's stories. Mm -hmm. Do you think about it? Um, if you choose to connect to other people's grief, losses, pain, um, we identify with that. We all want to hear our own story, right? Because right. that's the primary human thing. You, you want to hear, like, how does this relate with me? I think it is important that I have learned through the fuck cancer foundation and the fuck cancer endurance club of how people of different walks of life go through this battle and through that i have learned and therefore have been able to employ um certain ideas like how am i going to uh strengthen the pillars of my cancer ship mm -hmm. so Sometimes it's heartbreaking that uh, you follow these people through social media, and I'm fairly new to it, like two years or three years. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to be part of it, but I'm so glad I did. Uh, heartbreaking that, you know, they go through their battles, it's valiant, and then one day you find out that they're gone. And you look back, and what you're left with um, are the memories. And I think... It's a devastating loss because it's devastating not for that person because, you know, we'll be gone. But it's for our family, for our friends, our sons and daughters. That's so uh, meaningful what we went through and what we left behind. Mm -hmm. um, I take examples of people who, my God, how do they go through all these treatments? And how am I going to go through it? And I'm, I'm thankful that I've uh, listened to their stories, you know, from, from the young kids and to the ones who are just so young and beautiful and healthy or old, but then keep fighting and then just doing the best that they can for what is um, remaining. I think overall the team has helped me um, have this lens of clarity, meaning I know that I'm about to lose everything, my wife, my son, my work, this beautiful human experience of the lights of sorrows and nature that I love to move through. And once you have that realization that it can just go away, slowly or fast, however that may be, you have this singular focus of what's going to be important for you. To me, it is important that I live with compassion, gratitude, meaning acceptance and forgiveness. I think these are high levels of philosophies that human beings need to think about, study. And the hard part is practicing it. And I'm still learning. So my eyes, my ears, my feelings are open uh, to 
what others have to say. That, that, it's that's just. I mean, I. That's just beautiful. I mean, there's people say no notes. I have no notes on that. I mean, that's just that's just an amazing. Uh, I, yeah, I'm I'm literally speechless. Um, so the um, giving back, and uh, one of the things that that um, you're doing, and, and and I'm I'm kind of super excited about hearing about, and you've done it in the past, um, and again, it's kind of incorporating, you know, your training. Um, your help for others, the promotion of the healthy lifestyle. I mean, there, there's a lot of different layers to this. Um, but, but you have an event coming up, um, yeah. kind of a, 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 kind of a big deal. Um, and for those of you who, who have listened in, you, um, um, he's not only a, a Kona qualifier and a triathlete, but he's also an ultra marathoner. And so, um, you're, you're next level crazy, if you will. Um, but kind of tell us about the, what you got going on. Yeah, it is called JP's Backyard Ultra. And it's going to be held in Skyline Wilderness Park in Napa on September 28, 2024. Um, it is a loop course, 3.3 miles with about 550 feet of climbing, some rocky sections, some steep some shaded and beautiful, some fire roads. And on even hours at 8 a.m. we start, we go the clockwise direction. Mm -hmm. So this is for runners and hikers. And as soon as everyone finishes within that hour, it is, so it doesn't matter if you're fast or slow, everyone stops, mingle, eat, drink, you know, be happy, enjoy each other's companies. And then at 9 a.m., we go the opposite direction, counterclockwise. Right. And we do this for 10 loops total. So in essence, uh, a 50K, 33 miles with over 5,500 feet of climbing. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, JP's Backyard Ultra is a celebration of resilience, a reflection of my ongoing fight of challenges and of community. You know, it was so hard to put this event through because I'm the one who's funding it, doing all the promotion and asking for volunteers and donations and things like those, because I'm feeding all these people for their lunch, for <laughs> the aid stations and all these things, because I think that if I can get um, friends and families from my different circles of life uh, and others, uh, can come, then we can have this uh, sense of community and have a good time out on the trails. Um, the event I promote as free. Mm -hmm. I don't ask people to register. In fact, thank you to Skyline Park uh, organization and they gave me uh, free parking for the event. Mm -hmm. um, and that is their way of donating uh, to the cause. Um, you don't register. However, um, I ask people to donate however much they want to the uh, um, Fog Cancer Foundation. Um, last year when I did this, I uh, I raised over ten thousand dollars. Wow! Um, to add to the other two fundraising um, events that I did, just the usual online stuff. Please donate mm -hmm. to my thing. I, I think I, I reached close to 15K last year. Wow. Even I'm, I'm not putting any number to this year. I, I just want people to come. What happens, what happens? Uh, if they donate, that's great. I think everyone's going to have a good time. And we've got delicious lunch. Plus, um, I think what's so important, too, is that uh, people participating in this uh uh, raffle drawing and I had mm -hmm. great gift baskets and in those gift baskets uh, or raffle baskets I have uh, uh, mer merchandise from the uh, Fog Cancer Foundation and they love that because they they want to have this emblem you know they everyone agrees with the sentiment 
you know, that this is our fight against this disease. Right, and they right. want to wear that. Right. And in that basket includes wine. Uh, and uh, the I mean, you're, you're, you're in Napa area, so you have to Napa have wine. Area, it's almost, it's almost yeah. a requirement, right? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and there are uh, gels, power bars, uh, um, and other uh, um, goodies that we athletes love you know mm -hmm. for our training and even my mom contributed and uh, she makes all this beautiful lays with money so you're like giving money and then you're like getting money back because it's got this flower lay that's made out of money right so, so this wonderful gift basket and they can buy tickets and then uh um hopefully win awesome. uh, yeah so, so from the so from the donation, is it just through your normal fundraising page, or do you have a separate um, uh, link for that? It's through our uh, the givebutter.com give butter uh, awesome. yeah FC Foundation donation page. That is how uh, uh, we raise funds this year. And I think what I'm going to have uh, done is uh, for the people who are attending, I will of course, tell them to donate. I'll have mm -hmm. QR codes that they can scan and then they can buy ra raffle tickets. And that's how we're going to raise funds for, for the team. Right, right. So, and and, and um, we did talk about this a little bit, so I'm not going to put you on, but um, for the teammates that are out there who aren't in the Napa area, and, and by all means, if you want to do a trip, September around that time is absolutely beautiful um, in that area. Um, if If there is no virtual option this year there is no virtual option um but you know jonathan absolutely feel free to make a donation um and if you want to and if i understand you do you don't have to do the full 50k you can do it in two four six or eight hour increments if they wanted to or they can basically run any distance that they yeah. want to at this you point you want to um, yeah. So I think it would be great, team, if, if, if you're interested, you want to, you know, obviously support this amazing event and this absolutely beautiful man um, and what he does and everything that he is. Um, by all means, we will we will put the link uh, in this post. Um, feel free to donate. And then, you know, on September 28th at 8 o'clock Pacific time or it, whenever you want to get out there and start your um, own little backyard ultra uh, and make sure you post pictures, post videos. Um, we'll do the hashtag JP backyard ultra. So we'll get that trending out there on, on the fuck cancer endurance page. Um, so that, that sounds, that sounds, um, that sounds amazing. Thank um, you. Thank you, Brian, for that idea. I, I think uh, I love it. Uh, I don't have a virtual option, but um, participants to my event, um, get a um, uh, fuck cancer medal um, which I designed yeah so like I said you don't have to do a 50k you know little kids grandmas mm -hmm. you know uncles aunts moms dads they came this was a family event and uh, some hiked some ran some are really competitive you know I have I've got people who are like bad water ultra marathoners out there uh, and then you've got kids who are like nine years old completing their first half marathon. I had an 86 year old woman who did 16.5 miles, like five loops and anywhere in between their first marathon, their first trail run, their first half marathon. Wow. So, and I, uh, I, uh, I, I gave them medals. And, and of course, for the winners of the top three, I gave trophies and wine. So awesome. but if you are willing to participate virtually, and thank you for that idea, I'll, uh, I like it. I'll send you a medal. That, that'd be your prize. Okay. Well, now hold on. Cause you're going <laughs> to, cause, cause <laughs> oh you're, you're, yeah, you, you, you might don't know what you might've signed up for. So, uh, uh we, we have to put what we'll to do this but I, I mean that'd be a great problem to have right yeah, um, yeah but i'm pretty sure that we have enough uh people who would support this just because of kind of who you are and, and and what this means and and what this is all about um yeah it's just it's just you know i i when i 
for people who know me, um, I'm very rarely at a loss for words. Um, and, and these things I like to kind of keep it kind of like the discussion. Um, I am, I am borderline speechless after hearing not just your story, but your philosophy and, and what you are basically bringing to us. And it is, it is beautiful. It is inspiring. It is, um, it's, it's humbling. Um, and, and I just thank you so much for, for taking the time and, and sharing this very personal journey, uh, with me and with the team. And, um, yeah, you're just, you're just, if there's, you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, that there's, I know in my mind, I had a little lump in my throat and I'm pretty sure there are some out there. So, um, sir, again, thank you. I'm, I'm rambling here just because I'm speechless and I'm very rarely speechless. So I'm just rambling. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh, I would like to thank you um, for getting the word out about my event. And I, it is important for me to be part of this community, to be part of this team. Um, in the beginning, I thought that um, I am carrying this terminal disease. There is a passage from The Lord of the Rings uh, by J.R.R. Tolkien when um, Frodo Baggins and Samwise Gamgee were going up to Mount Doom. And uh, Samwise Gamgee told Frodo, I may not be able to carry it for you, but I can carry you. I am carrying this terminal disease, but I've realized, but I have, that I have been carried by my village, by my family and my friends. And I tell you, Brian, when I'm racing Kona this year, I'll be thinking of my teammates who are carrying me to that finish line. So thank you all. I, I, Thank you, sir. You're, you're an amazing person and beautiful soul. And thank you. Appreciate you. All right, team, let's get out there and support this guy. I, I don't know what else to say. So have a blessed and wonderful day.